Welcome back, fellow shop rats. We're back on the 26 Oakland today. Little details, little details, little details. But through all of this, you get a really good picture of what it takes to put a car that's been off the road for 75 years and get it back together to be able to drive it. So let's just watch the show intro. I'll see you in about 30 seconds. I'm Mike, and this is My Car Shop. Working out of a 100-year-old refurbished barn bringing 35 years of experience to projects considered beyond repair. Vision, creativity, and problem solving are essential tools in this place. Watch as we transform junk into polished metal miracles. This is My Cars Shop. Would like to start out by asking for you to pray for our friends in Texas, um, Duddy from Duddy's Adventures and the Dodge Whisperer, who are experiencing temperatures right around 30 degrees. I know this is a very terrible crisis for them, and we just pray that they will have the strength to endure this couple of days. Uh, it's 20 degrees here in the shop, and I can definitely feel what they're going through. Um, so as I said, we're back on the Oakland today. Uh, I'm going to get the furnaces fired up. Dad's on his way, I think, and we'll be back on this car. we got lots more to share and lots more to do before this car is ever going to be ready to hit the road. So, well, all right, I've talked too much. Let's just get after it. So we just moved the car ahead, and you remember last episode I had mentioned about we changed the oil while it was running. There's at least a half inch to three quarters of an inch of oil in there, and that's how thick that stuff is. So uh, yeah, what you saw on the video was very thick, um, but this is cold, and so <laughs> it's, as, as Wayne said, uh, thicker than molasses in January. Uh, cold day so yeah, and it's January it's January and it was 20 degrees in here when I fired the heat up so wow that's why I wanted to do it when we had run it up and down the road because things would be loosened up a little bit yeah, yeah. kind of like being using vintage tools on old cars kind of fits it does years. Okay. Is this the other jack stand on this side? Oh, you got one? Okay. Yeah, just drop one on each side. We'll put them back up in front of the springs where we had them before, I guess. I don't know. I don't remember where we had them exactly, but it's all side About eight teeth. Eight teeth. Go towards the end of the spring, just about where that, just behind this spring is that. You need to go, hold on, you need to go to the outboard a little bit. That's good. Right? Yeah, and mine's actually the same way. We're in a little better spot on the floor this time, I think, as far as oh, yeah. the jack stands not being all wonky. Yeah, a lot of areas. Yep. <laughs> Put that new end on there, it's a lot harder. Pan, working with a toothbrush again. I don't like to give them a big tool to work with because then the job would go fast. So. <laughs> 
just getting it all cleaned out there. The rear end is fairly well cleaned. We don't want to put any solvents in the rear end housing itself. If we do that, we need to gut the entire rear end. There's zero metal shavings in there. It's in good shape, and it's one of those things where we would have to disassemble it 100%, clean all the bearings, and it's not it's not necessary for it in the condition it's in. What we are going to do is put the new oil in. We have the gear oil here from Bob Drake. And then on a hot summer day down the road, um, after we've run the car and got some heat in the drivetrain, we're going to go ahead and drain all this oil out again and put fresh oil in so that it can flush anything out. But um, it's one of those scenarios where you have to make a judgment call, but if there's no visible sign of there being problems, don't stir up the dirt, leave things alone. You can cause more problems by trying to get too clean than if you just leave it alone. Remember, this gear oil is thick as molasses, even in that bottle. It's, it's thicker than you can imagine. Um, so stuff, anything in there is going to settle to the bottom and it'll be fine, but it's looking really good. What I dug out of there, I felt just a little teeny bit of grit in one spot and that was stuff that was sediment that I scooped out um, out of the bottom of the housing where there was a groove. So. One of the things that we're going to do is take this gear oil that we got from Bob Drake and put it in a pan here on this burner and heat it up and get it thinner so it's manageable. Then we can just suck it into our suction gun, push it into the transmission and push it into the rear end and get the capacities up. To try to just suck this into that suction gun would be virtually impossible as thick as this oil is. So getting it warmed up and decreasing its viscosity to, you know, making it more fluid basically so it's more manageable is the way to go with this. Use this wire brush on there. Set up one of your work tables. I will just throw a sandblaster and sandblast it. Oh, okay. Don't work hard. Work smart. <laughs> okay. Dad's talking about the rear cover. Yeah. I'll just don't worry about it. It'll all come off. We'll just sandblast it off. So if there's any big chunks of grease and dirt on there, get those off. But otherwise, yeah. five minutes in the sandblaster will be clean. I think I pretty much did. Okay. This stuff is not as thick as the stuff in the Oakland because it's been warm in the house. And of course, we're going to get it a lot warmer here. I'll just skip Burger King today and do this. Yeah. I wonder how French fries would taste out of that. Hard to say. <laughs> Probably not as good. All right, so the oil is nice and thin now, and I can reach down in through here and insert that into the transmission and then squirt that oil in, so see how it goes. If you've ever worked with any kind of gear oil, it's miserably thick and hard to work with, and heating it up a little bit makes all the difference in the world. Can you grab me a rag real quick? Just a blue towel over there. Oh. I meant to grab one and I forgot. It's a miserably sloppy thing, so. Do you need your work light down there? Nope. There's times I know I have to have it, but I'm still trying to rebel and be young. No problem is my hose is warm now. It's not as stiff as it was. Okay, let's see. Where is it? I can't really see anyway. All I can do is feel. Okay, I'm in it. Okay. Yeah, I can't see it from here. So. No, it's up on this side. Okay, it's one port close to it. Good. Okay. Must be 
get it close. You're going to see splashing around down there because it's hard to find that opening to put it in, but out it's hot. Yeah, I see some dripping there. Now. Yeah. Takes more. Oh, there it comes. Okay. So what I'm doing is I just put it in there until it starts to come back out, and then suck a little bit back out, and it should be good. It's running, right? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. That's when you pulling the hose back out, I believe. All right. Yeah. So what I did was, like I said, I filled it up till it started to come out of the hole, and then sucked it back down a little bit, so it's not, and that should be good. So, okay, we'll get the fill plug back in, and we're done. Whatever you call. Them. Oh yeah, some reinforcements or rolls, beads, beads rolled. Yeah. So yep. Dad's gonna go ahead and clean that little pan up so we can get that back in there while I'm over sandblasting the uh, rear end cover. So that's the next two processes. some grease and grime to clean off of there we'll hit that with the sander on the back side clean that edge up but uh, got most of it off so should be good we'll just hit that with a wire brush clean it up maybe throw it back in the cabinet one more time and then get some paint on it now we'll get some paint on that I hit this with the old super clean super degreaser and so that's uh, gonna eat all that off of there we'll get that wiped out but something I noticed um, I think this rear end was clocked I'd have to go back and look at the videos but I think it was clocked down here with this fill plug low and that's not correct it should be uh, just above or just at the axle center line so that you can feel the oil level up to this point with it down here, it would always be low on oil, and that's not good. I looked in the book, and this is where it's supposed to be. And by memory, well, you can do the assignment. Go back and look at other videos and tell me, but I'm pretty sure this was clocked one rotation off. Got it all cleaned up with prep saw, and got it shot with some etching primer, so we'll get some kind of black paint on there, and then let that dry while we go get some lunch. Dad's just about got this done, and we'll hit that with rust converter. And we're not gonna be able to install that today, but at least it'll be drying and ready for us to paint and install. We also gotta get screws for that, I just remembered. Oh yeah, okay. So, he's uh, like a pig in mud. <laughs>
painter and you just cannot stop putting a good finish on something, even though it's going to be under the car and nobody's going to see it. All right, we'll take it over to the furnace and get spot right there. Yep, put it over in front of the furnace and hopefully it's dry by the time we get back. So the cover's all ready to go and we just got to degrease the gasket surface on the rear end then we'll we're just going to use RTV on it like we have the other things on this car glue it back on there and get it filled up with gear oil so we'll get that done and then that part of it will be done so silicone on there maybe so we'll cut the hole big enough but we'll make it work So what I was referring to before is the location of the fill hole, and I believe it was down here, like this, and it needs to be up higher. Yeah, where was it? Show us again. I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was down like this, where it's, where the heck is it? It was like that. Okay, where your thumb is. Where my thumb is, that there it is. Yeah. Okay. And it should be clocked up like that. You could go one more, but you want your oil fill to be just about the center of the tube. And I think if we go one more, <laughs> it's so on there, I can't get it off. It's too high. Yeah, that's too high. It would be overfilling the axle. Yeah. So it needs to be right here. And I could be wrong by memory, so those who want to keep me accountable can go look at the videos when we took this apart. Two or three in there, maybe. <laughs> there it is. And see with that with that fill plug where it is now, then the oil level will be right here and that'll allow it to drain down the axle tubes. Otherwise, it's too low down here and it can only fill, you know, here. And it needs to be able to run up and down those axle tubes, so. I could be wrong, I could be mis misremembering, but regardless, that's where it needs to be, so. One bolt doesn't want to go in. This one didn't want to stay in, apparently. Yep, it was the bolt for sure, not the not the threads in the housing. Okay, it went in that one fine. Okay, if you want to just snug those down, don't tighten them, and then I'll come back and tighten them up. Because okay. it's, it's not a cork gasket, so we don't want to tighten it too much. Okay. So um, I know the feel for it, so... So Becky's canning stove is out here in the shops where she does a lot of pressure canning and uh, with her permission and this pot that we purchased we are able to just heat this oil up to a consistency that's usable to make our lives way easier to put that in. So I know I mentioned that earlier, but uh, so I'll give it another shot here. Shouldn't be long now. Dad will have that cover on. We'll get her torqued down, and then we'll be able to put this in the car. We just work to where they're starting to. Okay. Pick up some tension so you can tighten it from there. Okay, all right, I'll run around and torque them down, and uh, boy, the cover makes the rest of that rear end look really rusty. <laughs> I guess, huh? <laughs> That's all right. My 
favorite job in the whole world. It's almost too hot. Brad made a comment on the charger video when Joe was mentioning about putting the transmission in the Eclipse. And I think he said he smelled like gear oil for three weeks. <laughs> if you've not had the privilege of smelling this stuff, you're missing out in life. And if you can wear it as a cologne, it's even that much more enjoyable. I do want to mention that when you heat this up, you don't want to heat it too much. You don't want it to boil because you don't want to ruin the viscosity of the oil. This is almost too warm, but I wasn't paying attention. But I can still hold the gun, so it can't be too bad. about a quart there and we'll do the same thing well just like I did on the transmission which you didn't get to see I will run it in there until it starts to squirt back out suck out a little bit and we'll be good Got a little air in that one but doesn't matter cramps in my arms we may need to add this once it's driven we'll check it again because by the time it runs out the axle tubes where it's supposed to be and so forth hopefully otherwise we're going to have to heat another one we only have one more Well, let's see where we're at. Well, we still got a lot more to put in there, so I guess we'll go heat another quart. Just to remember the car is tipped forward, so we don't want to fill it too much because when we put it down, it will be a little high. Not that it's a big deal, but... All right, I'm gonna go heat that some more. We'll be here all day. Yep, starting to feel it now. One more, should do it. Imagine that this wasn't heated. It's so thick, I'm probably sucking some air past the piston seal in the, in the suction gun, like that. Yep, it's right there. It's about right here, which I'm comfortable with that because I know that when we put this on the ground, the level is going to be even higher back here and it'll run into the axle tubes the way it's supposed to. So we'll do that. We'll check it. It'll drive it for a while and then we'll check it again, but it should be good. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the water pump is leaking right here, which is no big surprise. And I think we have the tool that came with the car to tighten that packing down. We probably need to order a new packing, but we can tighten that down a little bit and hopefully get that to stop. So we thought we would take a look at that. Dad's digging for the tool right now. Hopefully we can find it. If not, we'll get a wrench that fits that. 
Well, the tool that I was thinking of won't slip over that because it doesn't have an open end, but this inch and a quarter wrench does. The thing we have to be careful of is you don't want to do too much. So what we need to do is we'll probably give it maybe a quarter turn, a little more than, and then start it up and see if it's still leaking because you can over tighten it and then ruin the packing. Um, and a lot of times it doesn't take much. So we'll see. That's quite a bit right there. I think we'll leave it at that and see how it is. The bearing feels good and tight in the pump, so I don't hear, see anything there. Let's get some towels and we'll dab that out, dry it out, and we'll fire it up and see what happens. on, hook the battery up. You know, it's not like a modern car. <laughs> At least it's not a Stanley steamer where we have to build a fire and wait for the steam to come up. Oh, with the smell of the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool, wouldn't it? insurance agent would have a heart attack if I had a standing steamer in this building. <laughs> they have enough of a heart attack about what I do in here. <laughs> Ready? Yep. So good. Yeah, I've seen it in so far. Sometimes that's all it takes. You gotta remember that packing has been sitting dry for 75 years. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind it weeping a little teeny bit, we just don't want it to leak. Right. The nice thing is this cooling system doesn't hold any pressure at all. So it's not like we have to maintain you know 15 pounds of oil cooling system pressure like a normal car does. Let's see. There's no seal on that cap. This engine is so much quieter when it's warm. I see just a little teeny bit of wetness right there, but you know that that's fine. I wouldn't even care if there was a you know, if it dripped once in a great while, that's fine. Still getting an oil drip over here, we'll have to address that. Well, I think it looks good. So that shaft is lubricated by the coolant? Yes. That end of it? Yes. The other end is um, a grease pit. Yes, it's grease right here. Got to be careful going in there with that fan. <laughs> with that fan spinning. Oh yeah. And I can see a little bit of grease in there. Yeah. This is more of a this is more of an oil cup actually than than grease, but it gets lubricant in there. It does have to be filled periodically. Yeah. What do you fill it with? I'm guessing it's 600 ear oil, but I'm not sure. I've got to look at it. I can see it's got lubricant, so I'm not too worried about it. You can see it's a yeah. little wet. Right against the shaft and the hose. And yeah. That's one of the first things I did when we started it was to look and see if I could see any wetness there. It's old dry.
any chokes out at the last? Or? I shot it off before I got out the first time. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky getting it started because you got to use your heel on the starter and your foot on the gas and your hand over on the choke. To oh, oh. Otherwise, it just starts and dies. Normally, when I've started it before, it's taken three times before it took off. And I thought this time I'll work the throttle a little bit better. And it one time died, and then I think it was the second time it started. Yeah, the foot starter, yeah. Yeah. So. Something else we decided to take a quick look at is why there's a short in this headlight. And I think it's right here in this plug. So we want to take a quick peek in there and see what's going on. Put a little PV blaster on the nut here and got it broke loose. Hopefully we can loosen this up enough now to get this ring out. There's one of the nuts and there's two on there so there we go. There we go. A little duct tape from the trip. Okay, good. I'm going to put this in a safe place where I won't break it. See if we can get the reflector out of there. I'm not sure what's holding that in. Yeah, the bulb is definitely good. I am surprised for a car of this vintage how good these headlight reflectors are. So, that's cool. Yeah, that's what it was. There we go. Okay. So why do we have a short? I don't know. Everything looks good there. Makes no sense to me why we have a short. Okay. I think the issue was the spring here. I think was touching, well it's not spring, but it's a steel casing around that wire was touching the bare wire there. So I pulled the, uh, I cut a piece of it off and I think we're gonna be okay now, so we'll try it. Nothing in the headlight looked like it was a problem. So all we can do is try. Okay, let's test it and see what we got. Yep, we just need to figure out the tail light. Okay. 